Warning. Listener discretion is advised. Red leather, yellow leather. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue. <coughs> 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 oh, not today, Satan. <clears throat> oh, I need to quit smoking. Hey you guys, what's up? We're going to do something a little different today. I was checking out Anchor. I was making sure that everything was ready and set to go. And then I checked the three episodes again because I'm a perfectionist. I checked them again to make sure that everything was ready. I wanted this to go off without a hitch. Tomorrow is the release date of the podcast. And I really wanted y'all to have a good amount of content ready to go. First day, y'all would have three episodes of different things to listen to. It would really give y'all a good edge of what's going on in my mind, um, some of the things that I've been through. And for whatever reason, I decided to punish myself. And eight hours before the debut of the podcast, I decided that y'all needed some more content. I don't know. Call me a masochist, I guess. But um, we're going to do something really unique that I know of. Now, I don't really pay attention to what other people are doing, and I try to stick in my own lane, I try to stay to my own world, so that way, if I create something or do something, people can't say I was inspired by them or whatever, but we're going to do something today that I call a scroll through, and basically what a scroll through is, is I'm going to sit here in my podcasting station at my desk, at home, I'm going to open up my phone, and I'm always being told by people that they have to be real careful around me when my phone's open, because I follow all kinds of crazy stuff. I follow a good amount of everything, so I think it's going to be nice and entertaining. I'm going to scroll through my Facebook, I'm going to scroll through my Twitter, I'm going to scroll through Instagram, and as I see things, I'm just going to talk about it. And I think it might be a little entertaining because I'm hilarious sometimes. <laughs> like, I'm funny when I'm not trying, and I think that this would be a good test of true comedy grit because I have no idea what it's about to pop up. I'm going to talk about the funniest thing that I'm looking at. But first, let me pay some bills. Here we go. So I'm going to open up Facebook, and I'm scrolling, and the first post I see is a picture that says, What celebrity death in my lifetime hit me the hardest? And thinking about it, I would have to say Joan Rivers. Definitely Joan Rivers, because she is the queen of comedy. She is always going to be up there in that echelon of of comedians but she kind of remains untouchable in a way because something about Joan that I really loved was her tenacity as a comedian and her nerve her grit she wasn't afraid to say anything if you got offended that's your business baby and I really think that her death in 2015 was it 2015 hold on let me check real quick I'm sorry her death in 2014 really triggered this weird era of offense and cancel culture in American society. Because I remember before her, you could say anything about anyone, and if you were a comedian, that was your job. Like, there are so many people she would shit on on a regular basis, and if she did her job correctly, it was hilarious. She didn't care who you were. She had something for you. I remember the worst read that she, the worst joke that she ever told about somebody had to have been about the Kardashians and Chloe in particular. She always used to make fun of Chloe for being abnormally tall. <laughs> she said that Chloe grew an inch every time she fucked a black guy. <laughs> and no one could get away with that today. But Joan. The society was different. When we had, uh, when we had comedians on a regular basis shitting on people, it kind of reminded us of our humanity, our humility, the fact that none of us were special because if everyone's special, that no one's special. 
and she didn't care who the fuck you were. She didn't care if you were the ugly Kardashian, the fat Kardashian, the tall Kardashian, or, you know, poor thing, all three. She was going to go after you. And people understood then that that was her job. That is why she was so successful as the queen of comedy and as a comedian and as a, as a socialite, as a person is because she, no one was special to her. She put a fire under everyone's ass. And so I would have to say that Joan Rivers, her death had the most effect so far on my life because not only, you know, did her dying mean something as a loss for comedy in the comedy world, it also meant a loss for for American society and the American fiber of who we are. Joan Rivers was the premium insult comment, and now everyone's so insulted by everything. Oh, I bet she would have a field day with Trump. Oh, I can only imagine some of the amazing shit she would say about him on a regular basis. Ah, But with her death, it didn't just impact the comedy world. It really impacted the entire world because after her death, I noticed everyone started to be real sensitive about everything. 2015, 2016, the most sensitive years of modern history. You got in trouble for everything, anything. You sneezed in the wrong direction. You shook someone's hand and held onto it for too long. Take a shit ton of Ambien and call someone a monkey. Like you were going to be canceled and lose millions of dollars. <laughs> and stuff like that wouldn't have happened. Joan Rivers was alive because she really reminded the entire world that we ain't shit. None of us are. None of us are. And because none of us are shit, it makes it completely fair to remind everyone that none of us are shit. So that's one. Uh, Music-wise, I think it would have to be a tie between either Amy Winehouse or Prince. And there's another one in there. Uh, Robin Williams. He's another guy whose death really just kind of threw me back because, you know, Robin Williams is a staple in my childhood and probably the childhood of a bunch of people across the nation, if not the world. And I just knew that the world was going to be a little less silly without him and with amy you know i've always loved jazz music so all i can only imagine the albums that we'd have if she was still alive with prince he was a legend of music and so it's time to keep scrolling i follow a lot of drag people drag 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 rupaul's drag race down fucked up drag <laughs> fuck this post uh, this post has a picture of Jada Pinkett Smith, and she is Pinkett, Jada Pinkett Smith, and she is, like, looking all sexy in a bed. She has her braids out, you know, no makeup, everything snatched, and it said, did someone say August? <laughs> I think y'all need to leave her the hell alone. I've seen posts about how people think that she is a child molester because apparently this August dude was her son's age, or because he was friends with Jaden. And August was a grown-ass man. He was 23 at the time. That is grown. So people are saying she was took advantage of him. She took advantage of him. Y'all need to give that shit a break. He was a grown-ass man. He knew exactly what he was doing. Scrolling, scrolling, gay people, gay people, gay people without their shirts, drag queens. <laughs> There's a post that says, if he was the only person that knew CPR and you needed help, would you let him save you? And it's this African-American gentleman, which, why you gotta be black, with herpes all over his mouth. And my friend captioned the post, put me on a motherfucking shirt. <laughs> okay, I follow Occupy Democrats, sexy people, sexy people, sexy people. Oh my god, this post says lesbians in movies versus lesbians in my hometown. And the lesbian in the movies is Ruby Rose, looking fine. She distracts the fuck out of me. She confuses the fuck out of me, because when I look at her, I am reminded of my very stable bisexuality, and I can't tell if I want her to sit on my face or if I want to sit on her face. Like, she scares me. She is one of the reasons that that I can't I can't function sometimes. I remember the first time I saw the pictures of her floating around whenever she was debuting on Orange is the New Black. 
I remember thinking to myself, like, this is... I already don't know what I'm looking for. Like, I'm already confused, people. Why are you doing this to me? And then the lesbians in my hometown is just this, like, big, brawly, biker chick, Andy Six, bull dyke. Love him. Love him to death. It's hilarious. This post is hilarious. Scrolling, scrolling, food, food. Patterson, Patterson, Black Patterson. Scrolling. Okay, this post says you're Mexican, but you don't like what? Guys, horchata is disgusting. And don't at me. You know what that shit tastes like? I want you to think about a big old bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and you put the milk in, and the milk can go over the over the cereal, and then you eat all the cereal, and then there's that nice, like, cinnamony milk at the bottom of the bowl. Imagine that. I want you to go into the sink, or go into the cabinet, and get down a glass, and put some ice in that glass, and then fill it up halfway with water. And then I want you to pour that bowl of cinnamony milk into the glass. That's what horchata tastes like to me. Nasty. Uh-uh. No, man. Let's see. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling to sexy people, sexy people everywhere. Houses, sexy people everywhere. Houses, sexy people everywhere. Let me see this one. What is this? Oh, cats. Fucking lesbians. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. This girl posted, if I was a stripper, I'd Naruto run to the stage every time they call my name. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I can only imagine. Scrolling, scrolling. Ooh, someone shared one of my posts. I uh, tweeted out whenever Donald Trump decided to float out the idea that we should delay the election because, oh, you know, over concerns of fraud and voters you know some bullshit he's really just afraid he's gonna lose so he is looking for any way to inspire mistrust in our democratic institutions because the second you seed into the american people's minds that this election isn't going to be fair the second he seeds into his followers' minds that if I lose, it's because the Democrats, it's because everyone was cheating, it's because there were 20 people in a room signing out fake ballots and sending them off. You let half of America believe that the reason you didn't win is because other people were cheating, rather than the fact that you're just a shitty president, the worst definitely in my lifetime, and the only person shittier ahead of you or could hold a candle to you is Andrew Jackson and the fact that that motherfucker is on the 20 still is beyond me but they, they shared this post that I said uh, that Donald Trump just proposed delaying the election until concerns of fraud can be addressed this man is trying to steal the election and if you aren't concerned you should be and I'm fucking right because this man is trying to steal the election by pushing the election back after realizing all the polls show him losing by margins larger than he was losing to Hillary in the polls in 2016. Now, all the polls showed Hillary winning nationwide by 4%. With every poll, there is a 2% margin of error. Hillary Clinton won by a 2% margin nationwide she lost the electoral college but she won the popular vote by two percent she won by three million vote the popular vote so she won by two percent which you know four percent polling ahead two percent margin of error two percent that's right but biden in the polls is leading by double digits in some states double digits in key states he is winning in texas right now which is unprecedented. Texas hasn't voted for a liberal in decades since Jimmy Carter. And before Jimmy Carter, never. Like, that is the level of shit that is raining down on Trump's world right now. And he knows that if he loses Texas, that's it. And not just that's it for him, but that's it for conservatives across the country because Texas is supposed to be a stronghold for the GOP. And the GOP shaking right now because it, all we have to do 
is when all the Democrats have to do is win every state that Hillary Clinton won in 2016 and then take Texas. And we don't even have to worry about Florida. We don't even have to worry about Georgia or North Carolina. We don't have to worry about the Rust Belt because Hillary Clinton blue states plus Texas equals electoral college. And that is why everyone's tripping right now. And if you are doing such a bad job that the farmers that I live next to are concerned about your ability to run this country for another four years, you should be concerned. That is that is exactly why he's proposing we move this election back, because he knows he ain't got no other chance of winning if we all go to mail-in voting in November. The GOP is just as scared. They just don't want to say nothing about it. But anyway, this ain't going to be a political episode. Gay people, gay people. No shirts, shirtless gay people. Okay. Shirtless gay people. Drag queens. Ooh, naked people. Gay people. Gay people. Gay people. Drag queens. Pretty people. Let me tell y'all, I follow pretty people because I don't feel pretty. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, Hercules. There's this uh, post by Occupy Democrats that has the, you know, the little sign outside of a church that they like to put Bible verses on, etc. This one by Trinity Baptist Church says, Trump or God? Pick one, because you can't follow both. Ooh, the tea is hot today. Ooh. Ooh, that's hot. Nuh-uh. Trump isn't ready for that one. And neither are these evangelicals, because they're right. This church got it. Ooh, I love seeing church people calling out hypocrisy, because that's... Oof. I wasn't ready for it. Pretty people, gay people, Lady Gaga, pretty people, gay people. Okay, okay. Gay people, pretty people, gay people, pretty people, pretty people, gay people. Scrolling, 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 gay people, pretty people, pretty people, gay people, drag queens, Lady Gaga. I'm telling y'all, I follow too many damn... I'm gonna have to diversify it, so that way next time I do a scroll through, there's plenty of different things to talk about. Because right now I got gay people, pretty people, men with no shirts on, girl with girls with the titties out, and then political stuff. Oh, fuck. There's this post that says... Mount Trashmore, and it has Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, and Trump on it. <laughs> Superimposed into the faces of Mount Rushmore that are supposed to be on there. <laughs> Ooh, that's the truth. Oh, fuck. Yes, one of my friends shared a post that has a red hat that looks like the MAGA hat, but instead of saying make America great again, it says, made you look, Black Lives Matter. That is a flex, motherfucker. That is a flex. Oh, no. Oh, y'all ain't have to go out like that. That is hilarious and terrible at the same time. Okay, do y'all remember that movie, Bridge to Terabithia? It was uh, inspired by the book. Some of y'all didn't know that, but that's okay. And it has that little white girl playing the girl it says my plans and then it has a picture of her and then it says 2020 and it just has a picture of a rope breaking i'm going to hell i'm going to hell that's terrible advertisements advertisements a la chingada advertisements advertisements oh fuck this one says if 2020 was an episode and it has a picture of the two doc two of the doctors from Grey's Anatomy in that episode where the plane crashes in the woods. Fuck, that's true. <gasps> gay people, pretty people, pretty people, gay people. Inappropriate things I can't talk about on this podcast because my grandma will be listening. At least she better be. Let's see what else I got. What else I got? Gay people, pretty people. All these, some of these posts in Spanish, and I don't even know Spanish that well. Oh, this one's the truth. It says, don't forget you can start late, start over, be unsure, try and fail, and still succeed. Amen. Amen. That, oh, that's my stepsister, Sapphire, that posted that one. 
let me tell y'all about Sapphire. Y'all need to go listen to her podcast and listen to her daily reminders, real inspirational shit. Kind of reminds me of Fonzie's Wisdom of the Day, but she does it every day because she, she's hustling. And I ain't got time to be doing a Fonzie Wisdom of the Day every day. That's why I'm doing them once a week with these episodes because all of the good ones I come up with, I'm saving them for the podcast, baby. I'm trying to give y'all some good content on here. But she is cranking these daily reminders out. Y'all need to go listen to her podcast and listen to her daily reminders. Because I get them in the morning. And uh, they're nice. They really are inspirational. And um, Gandhi once said that if you start your day with a positive thought, that it sets up the rest of your day for positivity so getting those daily reminders sometimes in the morning usually in the morning definitely by the by lunchtime it kind of does give you this overall feeling of satisfaction positivity and so i i highly recommend y'all going and checking out her stuff Uh, adventures without noodle boy she does with her best friend and roommate jess they are hilarious. I have I have yet to go through a whole episode without laughing my ass off. Okay, scrolling, scrolling. Gay people, gay people, gay stuff. Some shallow ass gay people, gay people, gay people, gay people. Ooh, booty, gay people. Ooh, this is the truth. There's this girl's there's this girl looking in the mirror and she has like stretch marks. Her body is in an hourglass, which is okay. And she she doesn't have a face necessarily, but you you can definitely tell it's a rendering of a girl who has body issues with herself. And on the mirror it says, Stop worrying if other people like you, do you like you? And that's the motherfucking truth. One of my favorite quotes by RuPaul is What other people think of me ain't none of my goddamn business. And it is something that I live my life by to this day. Ooh. Next post says, Dear racist, your child needs a pint of blood. Choose the white one. And it has a picture of two individual blood pints right next to each other. That is powerful as fuck because it's right. Um, Whenever this, whenever the riots were going on and whenever the protests were going on, I vocally said, I have posted everywhere that I bet blind people think half of us real fucking stupid right now. And it's the goddamn truth, and I stick by that. Mm, amen. Scrolling. Scrolling. Drag queens. Drag queens. Gay people. Gay people. Ooh, booty. Mm, gay people. Mm, gay people. <laughs> Now they want to make school only two days a week, but when I was only going two days a week, I had to go to court. Ain't that some motherfucking bullshit? That's fucking hilarious. That's fucking hilarious. Mm, Gay people, gay people with no shirts. Gay people with no shirts. Gay people with no shirts. Drag queens. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. No, I wasn't ready for this post. Ooh, I hate y'all. Fucking Patrick. Oh my god. One of my friends posted, drag queens be like, oh my god, I've done it. I've changed the the drag world forever with this one. And it's a stoned leotard. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Yes. Ah! Yes. I can't breathe right now. <laughs> Ooh, I need to quit smoking. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh my god. Okay. I'm so done. <laughs> oh fuck. Ooh, okay. Who I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Ooh. Okay, this post says who took your concert virginity? I'm intrigued. Um Lady Gaga, definitely. Definitely Lady Gaga. And she puts on a show. And I remember walking into the gates of that arena in Dallas, the American Airlines Center, and I remember expecting to see, like, you know, thousands of little gay people just like me, and you had old white women in there that looked like they was in church Sunday morning, you had all kinds of old white men in there, you had all kinds of everybody in there, and nobody was sitting in their seat. She does amazing. 
anytime she has a show, I'm going to go try and see it from now on because she life's too short and she puts on a fucking show. Ooh, here's somebody that I need to block after I read what this says. Mm, gay people, gay people, gay people. Shit. <laughs> if the police did their jobs, everyone would trust them. Ain't no song. Ain't no song called Fuck the Fire Department. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh, what? Mm, gay people, gay people. <laughs> this post says, uh, Give me a reason why I shouldn't beat your ass. Me. Ohana means family. <laughs> y'all are too much. I can't with y'all. Gay people, gay people, gay people, gay people. Gay people, gay people, gay people, gay people. Drag queens, people with no shirts on, all the palooza. Good for you. Gay people. <laughs> Self care is cancelled. We put an alcohol in slushies and act in a fool. <laughs> yes, queen. Okay. Mm, gay people. Let me tell you something. I just saw a post that said that, uh, you know, people are divided in America about schools opening back up. And let me tell y'all something. If you send your kid to school with this pandemic going on, you can just save some time and tell everybody you don't love them. You can save some time right now. Baby. People are still dying of coronavirus. People are dying, Kim. Don't send your babies to school. What's wrong with you? No. And I know I'm not a parent and I'm going to get a lot of shit for this later, but I don't give a fuck. If I had some babies right now, my babies would be staying their little ass at home. I'm taking them to grandmama's house. I'm giving them that laptop and saying, do your fucking work because I ain't going to jail for you. And they're not going to go. I'm not sending them to school to die. I'm not sending them to school to die of coronavirus. And I sure as fuck ain't sending them to school to die of getting sh the, the place getting shot up. No, so I ain't having kids until we do something about gun reform either. Mm, that's just a me thing, though. But whatever. Gay people. Gay people. Gay Ooh, he cute. Oop, some titties. Gay people. <laughs> this one says, fuck a heartbreak. Y'all ever seen the second, uh, the second cop car pull up? No. I've actually never been arrested because I'm a good kid. And the cops think I'm white. I know that sounded shitty, but it's true. Y'all know that. If I was black, I can't tell you how many times I'd probably be taken to jail already. I look white, so they think I'm white, and they let my ass go with a warning. No, I've had a ticket before, and that was some bullshit, but it was my fault. I'm the one that crashed into the lady. I took care of that shit, and I made it. I made sure that judge let me the fuck go. No, ma'am. Political stuff. I don't want this one to get too political. Ooh, here's a good one. It has four pills, one red, one green, one yellow, one blue. It says, choose one. The red pill says you can fly. The green one says you can read minds. The yellow one says infinite garlic bread. And the, four, the fourth one says, and it's blue. The fourth one is blue and it says your dog never dies or gets sick. Well, I don't have a dog. Not because I'm not a dog person, because I am a dog person. I just, I forget to feed myself sometimes, so I know I'd probably kill him. Poor thing. And I ain't trying to love somebody else more than I love myself. I did that for years. We ain't doing that no more. Mm, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Ooh, art. That's cute. Okay. More gay people. I need to start following some interest and stuff. Shit. Mm. <laughs> you know that's a goddamn lie. This meme has two individual different pictures, and the first one says women night out, and it's like three women twerking in the streets, wearing some clothes, with their hair done, you know, dancing around in the streets, having fun, looks like a good time, you know, doing the Lord's work. <laughs> and then this picture, this other picture next to it says men night out, and it has a bunch of men in the living room, on a couch, sitting next to each other, holding hands and praying. And that's a goddamn lie. <laughs> I'm trying not, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to laugh too hard, because every time I laugh, I start coughing and shit. Okay, llamas. 
Gay people, drag queens, Lady Gaga. Gay people, drag queens, llamas. Kitties. What the fuck is this? This bitch has got a bob and her bangs are... She looked like Edna Mode from The Incredibles. <laughs> fuck. Okay, scrolling. Huh. The fuck? Oh, the married iguanas. I ain't fucks with it. This stupid little hoe. What the hell are you wearing that for? Someone need to come get their daughter. This Stormy Rodriguez girl just said, Did someone say hashtag build that wall? Because this... This Rio Grande Valley girl is ready, and she has like this little crop topped, or she has this Trump T-shirt that she crop, you know, made into a crop top with some little black shorts on. You know, goddamn good and well from looking at her face. She is first generation Hispanic. Her mama probably don't speak no damn English, and I know this because she looked just like some people I grew up with. She looked just like some family members of mine. And oh, I'm so tired of of Latinx people who are who are Trump supporters because I don't think that they have got it through their heads yet that he don't like your ass either just because you hear legally he don't like you he don't like you if you aren't straight if you aren't white and if you ain't a good Christian woman a good Christian person he don't want you around I'm so tired of, of racist Hispanic people conservative Hispanic people talking about I like Trump I like what he's doing he, well, he don't fucking like you. This is about everybody. Not just because you've been here and you are here and you was born here and your mama was born here. He don't like you. He don't care. He ain't going to ask those questions. If it was up to him, if you're brown, black, yellow, he'd have your ass on a train out of here. No, I'm so tired of that. Gay people. Gay people. Ooh, fuck. The Hill Reporter just went in on this one. Says Mary Trump's book sold more copies in a week than the art of the deal sold in 23 years. Well, 32 years, I'm sorry. Shit. The library is open, baby. If y'all don't know, Mary Trump is uh, Donald Trump's niece. Mary Trump is the daughter of Donald Trump's older brother, who was kind and liberal and respectable, and the one who died of alcoholism, God rest his little soul, because Fred Trump, Donald Trump's dad, and Mary Trump's grandpa put all this pressure on him because he was heir apparent to the Trump dynasty. And in the attempt to deal with trying to be everything that Fred Trump wanted him to be, Mary Trump's dad developed an alcohol problem and died of alcoholism. And ooh, it's a really good book. Y'all should go check it out. It's called Too Much and Never Enough. Um, I got it on Audible. I was listening to it. It's real good. It's real good. And it really gets into the psyche of Donald Trump and the mentalities that he grew up with and why he became what he became because of his childhood. And I don't think enough people understand and look into that type of thing because they don't think that their childhood has enough to do with who they become or what they are. And it really do. <laughs> the real reason we are going to a cashless society is because young people can't count back change. <laughs> Fuck. That's true. I don't get that one. Why, people? Mm. Ooh. Fuck. Some of y'all about to get real mad, but it must be said. And then it has a picture of that 70s show being greater than friends and i i gotta agree because i can sit and watch that 70s show if it's on tv already because i'm too lazy to change it but friends i could never really get into i don't know maybe it's because i don't see anyone on there that i can identify with maybe it's because whenever friends was on i was waiting for simpsons to come to to come on right after it so i never really got into friends but i mean it's all right i guess Ooh, I'm going to have a lot of ugly comments on YouTube because of that one. Drag queens, love them, love them, gay people. <laughs> oh, fuck. This post says the hand that 2020 dealt us. And it's that motherfucker from Scary Movie with the fucked up, this is my strong hand. <laughs> oh, fuck. Ooh, shit. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Ooh, fuck. 
Okay, scrolling some more, scrolling some more. I really like these. These are fun because I don't have to come up with nothing. I don't have to make a script. I can just turn on the microphone, sit at my little desk here, and just go through and <laughs> judge all the rest of y'all. There's this uh, there's this post with a house that's like a pinata with like a shit ton of balloons on top. And there's this little baby dressed like the little boy from Up. Uh, someone hit him. Oh, my heart. Mm. Oh, hell no. I remember this fucking shit right here. Oh, and everyone was fucking quiet about it, too. Like, we were mad for three days, and then everyone just kind of moved the fuck on. This post says, Do y'all remember that they found a black teen inside a wrestling mat, missing organs, stuffed him with newspaper, and ruled it an accident and closed his case? That Kendrick Johnson kid? That was some bullshit. And then... And then the prosecutors and the DEA and whoever the fuck was in charge of that investigation said there weren't any signs of foul, there weren't any signs of foul play either. That is some hot bullshit right there. These are the things that we're talking about with this Black Lives Matter bullshit. If that was a little baby white girl, if that was a little white girl rolled up in a wrestling mat missing her organs, they would have burned that whole city down. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. Kendrick Johnson, y'all look up this case. It is some bullshit. Oh, I remember that. Oh, now I'm all mad. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I'm gonna get it together. Oh, here's a good one. You know what? We ain't gonna do that one. Let me tell y'all. I'm looking at a post right now that says, just pack the essentials. And it's the picture that says me. And it says... And it has a picture of, like, the back of a car, all kinds of stacked with Dr. Pepper. And let me tell y'all something right now. This is probably going to lose me some followers. This is probably going to lose me all kinds of things. This is probably going to get me attacked on YouTube and Spotify. Let me tell y'all something. Dr. Pepper be nasty, guys. I'm so sorry. One, I don't really like soda to begin with. Two, Dr. Pepper's all kinds of sweet in all the wrong ways. It, it tastes like... Coca-Cola that someone added sugar to and then put water in to get rid of the Coke taste. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. We ain't doing that. <laughs> this one's stupid. It says, looking up at tall boys, and then it has a picture of fucking tall boy beers. Adding all sips or whatever the fuck. Nobody. My ankle for no reason. <laughs> fuck. This is a picture of this like person walking, wearing, wearing shoes or whatever, and then their ankle's given out on them. That happens to me sometimes. That do happen to me sometimes. I will be walking anywhere. I'll be walking to the net mailbox. I will be walking out of my room door into the kitchen. And then out of nowhere, my, my ankle's like, eh. And then just gives up on me. Like everything else. Ooh, amen. Amen. This post says, heal because we have children who don't deserve the broken versions of us. If this ain't the goddamn truth, ooh, honey, if my parents would have decided to have me after they got over their own personal traumas and shit, I cannot tell you how 50 million times better my life probably would have been. But that ain't how it work out sometimes. You get the life you're given, and the challenge, it seems to me, is how you navigate that. And obviously, I did a pretty damn good job. Okay, art, that's cute. Mm -hmm. If y'all hear me breathing, I am sorry. Not only am I a little chunky, but I'm also like sick with something. It's not the coronavirus because I can taste and I can smell and I don't have a fever yet. And I literally have none of the symptoms because even my cough is productive. I don't know. It's it's honestly, I feel as though it's because I started smoking again. And I know a lot of y'all are going to get mad at me because I'm still out living my life and shit with this random cough. But it started when I started smoking. No one around me has coronavirus. I don't go anywhere except work. I don't touch nothing. I was built for this coronavirus lockdown because I don't go anywhere when everything was open. You know what I mean? I go to work and I take my sweet ass home and then I go to bed or I do what I got to do. And then I wake up the next morning and I take my ass back to work. And then on Saturday nights, I will go out to the club, shout out to 212 and live my best gay life. 
and then I'll take my ass back home. That was my life before coronavirus. So, the only thing this lockdown changed was me getting nasty on a dance floor. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Scrolling, scrolling. Sc- I'm going to scroll for about an hour and a half, and then I'll cut everything down so that y'all have less of the scrolling phase to go through. Scrolling. I feel like I got all I'm going to get on Facebook. Mm, gay people. More scrolling. <gasps> Ooh. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, fuck. Someone took a screenshot of two people arguing on Facebook, and the first one says, Quit hitting on my boyfriend! And then the comment says, Tell your boyfriend to stop having all that ass. <laughs> fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Booty, booty, no shirt on. Oof. Amen. Four million seventeen-year-olds turned eighteen before the November election. Y'all need to register to vote. Ooh, yes. It is the only responsibility we have as Americans to this country. Personally, I think we ain't need to be given out no nothing. No, nothing unless you're registered to vote. I think we all need to be automatically registered to vote at 18. I think that in order to get financial aid and all of those, all of anything, to get food stamp, anything in this country, 18 years old, you need to sign up to reg- and register to vote. I think registering to, to vote should be included as a form of identification for document purposes. Uh, ooh, we all need to register to, to vote. It is our only civic duty in America. It's the only thing we have to do. We have the opportunity, and we are so blessed to live in one of the best countries in the world, if not the best country in the world, even on our worst fucking day. We live in the best country on this planet, and we have the nerve to decide we ain't going to pay attention to nothing. That is hot bullshit on a stick. No, ma'am. It don't take two seconds to pay attention to what's going on. And this podcast is part of helping y'all because y'all need a place to go to to get news, to listen to someone with opinion that isn't biased or built for someone, built against nobody. I'm not for Trump. For the longest time, I wasn't for Biden. It took a good amount of soul searching for me to get on the Biden train because I was going to go vote. I was out supporting Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren. I was out repping for them. I uniquely happen to fall in the middle of both parties, and I don't necessarily have a party that perfectly fits every ideal that I have, because I'm conservative when it comes to the idea that we need to protect our status as the military superpower in the world, and we need to protect, which is something the Republicans used to stand for was fiscal responsibility, but I guess that ain't the thing no more. And then I'm I'm very much a liberal when it comes to social issues, which there really isn't a party for people like me. And I always sign with the I always side with the Democrats because I'd rather have I'd rather have gay people have the right to vote, and I'd rather have black people not being murdered in the streets, and I'd rather have trans people not being murdered in the streets, and I'd rather ha- everyone have their right to an education to a higher education than remain the superpower militarily in the world so i always just end up voting blue but the whole reason i created this podcast was to give people just like me in the middle people who are you know too busy to give time throughout their day to pay attention to things an avenue in which they could learn what is going on in the world and in our country without really having to pay attention to a news source when it comes to reporting on the news i'm going to be completely unbiased about what's going on i'm going to tell y'all what I saw, I'm going to tell you what I read. I'm only going to tell you all a bit about things that I found two more links for from credible sources. I'm going to piece together what everything's saying. I'm going to tell you what that side is saying, what this side is saying, and then I'm going to tell you what I think. And then you can use all of those, all of that information to build your own opinion on. And I think that is what news organizations forget to do because they make their money from how many people are watching. So they have to make all this shit entertaining. 
they have to make all of this shit polarizing so that way they can get the people that agree with them to watch. And I don't think that's right. That's why you have Fox News only really creating a show around staunch conservative Republicans. And you have MSNBC creating a lineup of nothing but, you know, hyper-liberal ideals, which is good and great and all. But we're all the news organizations that operate in the middle where I am. I'm a Texas Democrat. I am a moderate, left-of-center Democrat. And there really isn't a place for someone like me or someone who is right of center. There isn't really, probably CNN, they're more unbiased, but they still have a left-leaning tendency when it comes to the news. And I wanted to name this podcast Middle of the Road and make it strictly political, but that ain't entertaining. (laughs) And I've got so much more to offer y'all. Anyway, I think that's all for Facebook. Let's switch over to Twitter. My Twitter's juicy as fuck, y'all. I can't open my Twitter in public. That's how good everything is on here. I'm scrolling all the way up to the top. I'm going to give y'all a break. Okay, and we're back. Now, I just want to warn y'all ahead of time. Y'all should go follow me on Twitter. I'm at Fonzie Graziano. Y'all need to go follow me. I'm always retweeting some really cool shit. You'll be hella entertained. And... I'll get to see all the crazy shit y'all are posting and probably mention it in the next episode. So, I'm scrolling. Ooh, fuck. Retweet. Why are all these black people mad about TikTok being banned? I thought we deleted that app after all the Black Lives Matter stuff. That's the motherfucking truth. I really fought with myself. And it took me a little bit to finally download TikTok. I made that one video... I went viral on TikTok after I got my wisdom teeth taken out because Dr. Graves took some TikToks of me and uh, it got all three of them together, got like two million views. One of them had a million and a half. And it was the video where you have that guy talking to the dental hygienists and the dental assistants and he's like y'all need to call somebody and let me tell you something i get real country when i'm tired when i'm hungry when i'm drunk the south just comes alive in me and anyway i was coming out of the medication and i don't remember half this conversation with them What I meant to say the entire time was that they needed to call someone because their HR person was probably a big old pervert because there were only gorgeous people working at that motherfucking AOMS. Anyway, it gets all cut up. (laughs) And basically, I tell them they need to call someone because ever since I walked in that motherfucking place, everyone's been gorgeous. And I was waiting for an ugly person to make me feel at home and nobody. Pretty person, pretty person, pretty person. I ain't seen an ugly motherfucker since I walked in here. Except me, obviously. Anyway, back to the scrolling. Oh, I follow a lot of drag queens on here, too. I follow a lot of drag queens and a lot of porn on Twitter, so apologies in advance. There's a lot of stuff y'all ain't going to be able to see. I follow a lot of um, pop culture stuff on Twitter. I like Twitter because you don't get a bunch of bullshit on Twitter. You only see what you want to see. Twitter really is ten times cooler than Facebook to me. Joe Biden just tweeted five hours ago, Now more than ever, we need a president who believes in science. A motherfucking man. Our current president thinks that windmills cause cancer. The sound. No. No, ma'am. Ugh. No, you you know what? His voice, every time he speaks and says something stupid, it gives me migraines. Maybe he causes cancer. Ugh. Scrolling, scrolling. Oh, Lady Gaga is nominated for like 9 million VMAs, and I'm so excited because I've been voting like a motherfucker. Oh, yes, baby. Porn, porn. <laughs> what the fuck? Asia O'Hara, drag race, drag queen, just tweeted about 20 hours ago. I don't know who needs to hear this, but sell your turnips. What the fuck? Porn. Ooh. Oh. Anyway. Titties. Titties. Scrolling. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Let me tell y'all, I follow shit about Lady Gaga everywhere. 
I love her so much. I can't even, this is going to be like 20 million episodes about all the shit stacked in my brain that I know about this woman. So, um, I'm, I'm going to move this mic. Can y'all hear me better? I, I really need to get disciplined with the mic etiquette and the mic behavior because I forget I'm talking to y'all and not to my fucking phone. Um, okay. Porn, porn, porn. Straight man getting his booty ate. Porn. Porn. Okay. Porn. Lady Gaga. As, uh, Donald Trump just tweeted. I'm not even following him. Oh, I'm not. Okay, so Donald Trump tweeted, Astronauts complete first splashdown in 45 years. Very exciting. Now, let me tell you, the only reason I can see that is because I follow Diane Warren, and she replied to his tweet, Go on the next one as long as it's one way. <laughs> That's fucking savage. Diane Warren is uh like Oscar-nominated songwriter. She's written... She wrote that... Oh, I no, I think she's an Oscar-winning songwriter. She wrote the song that Aerosmith did for that movie Armageddon. She wrote that song. And um, she's worked with Gaga. Of course, that's why I'm following her. She wrote the song that Gaga did that got a nomination for Till It Happens to You that was in that movie about campus rape and the rape culture on American universities. It's really powerful. Anyway, she commented, why don't you go on the next one as long as it's one way? <laughs> She's a bad bitch. Mm. I follow all kinds of pop culture and music stuff on Twitter because you can really get all the all the shit that you need to see. Ooh, worldwide sales charts says that Lana Del Rey has sold 131 million records worldwide since her debut single in 2011 becoming one of the best-selling alternative artists of all time. I love her. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. And the the tweet that she's being canceled for is some bullshit. She is not racist. She's had leading men in all of her music videos as the love interest. She's not racist, guys. Y'all need to quit with all this cancel culture shit. I have an episode coming up about it. It's really power. It's really important. It's really impactful. Anyway, carrying on. Yes, Kesha. Yes, Kesha. Okay, so Kesha just retweeted this video or this Kesha just retweeted this post from someone that said, I can't believe that this is the last time I get to watch the music video to TikTok by Kesha. And Kesha captioned it with, may TikTok be with you. <laughs> scrolling, scrolling. People that drink water out of coffee mugs. What is wrong with you? Ooh, naked. Ooh, porn. Ooh, damn. There's just booties and titties and penis all over the place. Lady Gaga. Oh, This post said, y'all, my son with autism just said, hey, I'm crying so hard right now. Oh, two of my cousins have autism, and they're my favorite, honestly. Not because they're autistic, just because I love them, but it definitely is a challenge navigating, one, of course, being autistic, and two, raising children who are autistic. The world isn't kind to people considered other, and it's it's really just some bullshit. And I'm... <sighs> that post was powerful. I follow Cher... Cher, all, all, Cher is always saying some shit on Twitter. I love her. What am I reading? Is this real? Okay, I'm going to scroll past that one and do some more investigating later. Um, 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 um. Ooh, porn, porn, porn. In regards to the coronavirus, someone tweeted, We are losing the number of people who died on 9-11 every two days. And that is some crazy shit. Retweet. Ooh, this is another reason I love Lana Del Rey. Y'all are so busy trying to cancel her for being racist when, one, she didn't tweet that shit racistly with racism in her heart. And you can tell that by the way she was talking about it. First of all, Ariana Grande was in the list of girls, and Ariana Grande ain't black. Y'all don't get to claim her. She's Italian. Stop it. One. Second of all, she was entirely... She was entirely 
involved in the Black Lives Matter movement right after the death and killing and murdering of George Floyd. She blacked out her Twitter. She blacked out her Instagram. Whenever Kanye was going crazy talking about how slavery was a choice and, you know, she has been a vocal critic of Trump. All of the money from the sales of her poetry book, which honestly isn't as good as mine, but I love her to death still is going to the Navajo Water Project. She is involved in racial issues. So, I think y'all need to leave her alone about this shit. She's been woke since day one. Y'all just look up her National Anthem music video. She has Travis Scott playing as the president in her music video, and she's Jackie O. Like, come on. If she was racist, would she have an African-American man playing her love interest? And then, no, no, that's not how, no, that's not how racists operate. Fuck, retweet, never let a man with a Toyota Corolla hurt your feelings. Ah! <laughs> yes. Lady Gaga, drag queens, Nike, Lady Gaga, Miss Fame. Miss Fame is a drag queen that I think is sickening. Oh, I love her so much. I can't right now. Hold on. She is perfect. Oh my god, it's not even fair. Okay, carrying on. More porn, more porn. Y'all need to stop judging me. I can hear it through the damn microphone. (laughs) This post just said, If you came from TikTok and you're new to Twitter, open this thread. And then I opened it to see what it would say, and it says, How to deactivate your account. (laughs) Fuck. For real though, y'all. Zed, you did not. Oh my god. Okay, so Zed is a producer who's worked with Lady Gaga, has worked with Selena Gomez, has worked with some big names in the pop industry, and he used that fucking reface app to put his face off, to put his face on top of all those bitches from the Victoria's Secret fashion shows with the wings and shit. Well, he just made me real angry because I'm confused again. Drag queens, drag queens some more. Ooh, ooh, what is this? What is this and why? Oh, someone posting a video of prostitutes getting arrested in, in Moscow. Ooh, booty. Sex work ain't none of our business. We need to leave them peoples alone. Ooh, shameless plug for Lady Gaga's new makeup brand, House Labs. She just came out with some really awesome identity gel pencil eyeliners. They look pretty awesome. I don't wear makeup, but if y'all do, y'all should check them out because they look badass. Oh, I always get asked if I'd ever do drag. And let me tell y'all something. If I ever did drag, it would not be fair to the other bitches out there. Okay, because I have charisma, uniqueness, nerve, talent. I can dance. I can sing live and I can sew. And I'm hilarious as fuck too. And it would not be fair to the other girls out there because I would win RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay, and it just wouldn't be fair. So I'm just going to throw that out. Just going to throw that out there. Oop, porn. More porn. Ooh, and he's hitting it raw, too. Nasty. Ooh, you're nasty. That's how you get coronavirus. You heard it here first. That's how you get coronavirus. More porn. Drag queens. More porn. Ellen. Drag queens. Porn. I need to find more things to follow than just porn. Scrolling. Scrolling. Scrolling, Ugh, Lana Del Rey, y'all have no idea, that bitch is my wife. Whew, I just saw another post, oop, someone's eating ass. Alright, I'm telling y'all, I got porn all, all, I got porn all over this shit. I probably need to find other things to follow. This is why I do not open my Twitter at work. This is why I do not open my Twitter when I'm around other people. This is why if you see my... This is why if you see me on my phone out in public, do not look at my fucking screen. You're going to see something you ain't trying to see. Ooh, I'm obsessed with two things right now. I'm obsessed with the promo videos and the promo posts for House Labs identity eye gel liner things. And I am obsessed with Black is King. First of all, let me just say that Black Lives Matter, they always have... And if you have a problem with that, I don't know what to tell you because I'm going to be saying that shit until the day I fucking die. Definitely a shit ton more on this podcast. And second, I love me some Beyonce. 
So this whole Black is King thing had me nostalgia for Africa, a place I haven't even been. It had me proud to be Black, which I'm only like 7% of. But you know what? 7% is enough for me, okay? It's enough for me. I'm not Rachel Dolezal. I ain't 0% Black. I'm 7% Black. That means that a great-grandparent of mine was like full Black, okay? So that makes me a part of the community. Leave me alone. Let me live my fantasy. (sighs) Rude. Scrolling, scrolling, more porn. I'm going to find more things to follow on Twitter between the next time I do one of these, so that way I have more things to talk about. Porn, 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 Lady Gaga, porn, porn. Y'all, y'all really need to delete all y'all's TikToks. The Chinese are using TikTok to spy on Americans. Please don't at me about this. It is proven. There is all kinds of bipartisan intelligence on this topic. Seriously, though, y'all need to go vote for Lady Gaga on the VMA.com. I don't know what it is. VMA something. Y'all definitely have to go vote that. Go listen to her album, Chromatica. It's amazing. There's not one skip on the album yet. Y'all need to go see what's up with Black is King, Beyonce's visual album on Disney+. Plus. You can sign up for a free Disney Plus trial for, I think, a year if you connect it through Verizon. If I'm not mistaken, I have I have Verizon, so I got a whole year worth of Disney Plus for free. So y'all need to go check it out. It's amazing. It's extremely powerful. And right now I'm listening to Why the Cage Bird Sings on Audible.com by Maya Angelou. I want to remind y'all that my book is on Audible as well. Glory, and the album I'm listening to right now is Taylor Swift's Folklore. I listened to it once. It didn't really scream at me, so I'm listening to it again, just in case I missed anything, and there's some songs on there that are really powerful. Scrolling, scrolling, looking for something to talk about. More porn, drag queens, porn. Justin Bieber, can't stand your ass. Porn. Oh no. Hey, y'all remember those little juices in the little plastic barrel looking things that we used to drink from at all the cookouts? All the good cookouts and family gatherings had these juices that looked like like whiskey barrels. And there was a purple, blue, red, orange, and of course you always went to the purple and the blue one first before they all went out because that's the one that everyone grabbed first. And I just saw a tweet that said, Here goes the last great American dynasty, and it has a picture of these juices in a cooler. What's happening? Someone tell me. I don't understand. Is somebody chasing you? Porn. Ooh, booty. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. All right. Elephants. Missy Elliott liked this tweet. Elephants. Mm, that's the damn truth. This uh, tweet just says that we took this era for granted, and it's Madonna's Rebel Heart era, which was a great album. I love that album. It got me to fall in love with Madonna all over again. That album and the MDNA album. Those were both good albums. This last one, it took me a little bit to get into, but I finally got into Madam X. Okay, I have about an hour and a half worth of stuff to listen to and edit down, so I'm going to stop it here. Thank you all so much for making it all the way to the end of this. I think this is where we pull the plug with this episode. If y'all would like, y'all can follow me on Twitter at Fonzi Graziano. Y'all can follow me on Snapchat, Fonzi Graziano. Instagram at Fonzie Graziano. Y'all tell me if you like these types of videos. I'm going to make sure that I follow all kinds of other shit. Y'all tell me if y'all like this type of episode. I'm going to do a shit ton more of these because they're fun. They're easy. It's not too demanding. A lot of prep doesn't go into it. And it's a good break from all of the serious other things that I might be talking about in the other episodes. So with that being said, I think it's time to... I know that today is August 2nd, the day before the debut of this podcast, Ask Fonzie Anything. This is the fourth video, the fourth episode. I'm, I've am i had so much fun getting this shit ready for you. I feel like I'm doing what I should have been doing this whole time, because I got some shit to say, and I have an avenue to say it now. 
and I don't have people hanging over my shoulder telling me what I can and cannot say, that's extremely powerful for people like me who don't like being told what the fuck to do. So, if y'all would like to support this podcast, you can do so on anchor.fm forward slash ask Fonzie anything. If you don't know how to spell it by now, I feel sorry for you because I said it a few times in the other episodes. F-O-N-Z-I-E, just like the Fonz from Happy Days. It's on the cover of all of my books. It's on the fucking cover of this podcast. Also, I have a Patreon. There's a link to it somewhere. I don't really have exclusive anything on there yet. I'm still trying to figure out how the fuck it works. I feel like my grandmother, who can't use her DVD player. Love you, Grandma. I'm sorry. I know you're listening to this right now. But I hope you all enjoyed this podcast. I have so many other things that I'm ready to roll out for y'all. I have my second book coming out sometime eventually. The third book, I am almost finished writing. I am working on a novel right now, something that y'all only know if you're listening to this podcast because I haven't posted it anywhere yet. I'm really excited to see how that turns out. I'm really excited to see where that leads me and takes me. I just really want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. I never really thought that... Actually, this is a whole ass fucking lie. I was going to tell y'all, I never really thought that I had a unique perspective, but I've always known I was woke as fuck. I've always known that I had some shit to say because I've been saying it since I was little. I was always that person, that kid, that bitch in the corner was like, no, 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 no. You wrong. You lying. This ugly. I've always been really blunt. So, you know, this podcast is kind of the perfect avenue for me to just get all of the things I have to say out into the world. This is great. I have so many more things planned for y'all, uh, for you guys. I can't wait for y'all to listen to them and see them and watch them and experience them. I don't really have a let me explain for y'all today. I don't really have a Fonzie's Wisdom of the Day. One of the only things that I definitely want to tell y'all is to make sure that y'all register to vote. Make sure that y'all register to vote because it's really important. That is what I will consider my Fonzie's Wisdom of the Day to y'all. Earlier, when I had that little rant about making sure that y'all register to vote, that is the Fonzie's wisdom of the day for this episode, because it's so important. I cannot stress this enough. Our only job as Americans is to enjoy freedom and to register to vote. And if you have the bravery to do so, you can serve in the military. But our only job for everybody, every single person, is to register to vote, to vote. That is our only responsibility. Up to us to be the change in the world that we want to see. It is up to us to be the people and the generation that decides that we're not going to take any more of this racism shit, we're not going to take any more of this sexual harassment shit, and it is entirely up to us. If all of the people that were eligible to vote in America would register and actually vote, we would be in a better place right now. There would not be so much divisiveness in America, and it really does fall down to us. So, I have zero guilt about voting in VMA shit. I don't have any guilt voting on The Voice shit, American Idol bullshit, retweeting shit, and voting, because I vote where it matters. Fonzie's Wisdom of the Day. With that being said, we've officially made it to the end of Ask Fonzie Anything. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this entire episode. If you want to hear more, I have tons of episodes posted already, and I'll post new episodes whenever I want. No, but seriously though, usually Mondays, and when the show starts growing, I'll start releasing episodes twice a week or something. If you like the show, it is available almost everywhere podcasts can be heard, including Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Make sure you add, like, subscribe, or follow me on my social media profiles. It's at Fonzie Graziano on everything, so you don't have to worry about missing an episode. Make sure and send me DMs to request episode discussion topics. You can write in to me if you need advice. I've been told I'm an infinite spring of wisdom. I can definitely give you an outside perspective. I'll tell you what I would do anyway. And who knows, your letter might be the one I answer in the next episode. Uh, If you like, you can directly support the podcast. There are links in the bio to my Patreon and Anchor Direct. Or you can just buy one of my books. My first book, Glory, is available in print on Amazon.com and Walmart.com. The ebook is available on Kindle. And there is an audiobook available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes.com, I think. But don't quote me on that.
Also, my second book, uh, Raindrops and Other Lullabies, which was originally due for release earlier this year, but it's been pushed back twice due to the coronavirus. It'll definitely be out before the end of the year, though. Uh, if you go to my website, not only can you download and read PDF previews of both books, but you can also listen to a sample of the audiobook of Glory, and if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get an exclusive updates on what I'm working on and promo codes and sales and discount info. And last but not least, I just want to remind y'all to be a rainbow in somebody's cloud, be kind to yourself and others, unless they talk to you crazy, and wash your fucking hands and wear your goddamn mask. I want to go to the bar. We'll get through this together. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I think you're pretty cool. I don't care what they say about you. Bye. Bye.